There we are. It says it's doing it now, Renjen. Morning to you. Uh, OK. Um, Roger, I understand that you've just written a blog about the local elections that happened at the end of last week. Yeah, it's a bit a bit broader than um, just the local elections, but I think the point about the local elections which is being missed is the uh, huge rise in the number of independent councillors that have won seats. So they've won 8.6% of the of all the seats consented uh, contested, 8.6% have gone to independence, and that's risen from. I didn't work out the figure. I worked out the 8.6%, but it's probably gone from about three and a half percent to 8.6%. Now, the Green share went up, the Lib Dem share went up, the Labour share went up. Of course, all at the expense of the Tories. The uh, the um, Reform Party again that went up, but. Uh, since George Galloway, when he won in Rotherham, you remember we talked about that. And I said, the thing that everyone's ignoring here is the second place person was an independent. And that's massive. I mean, the, the Workers' Party is a big thing. Um, I'm that um, Aaron Bastani is doing a video later. He's interviewed George Galloway and he did a piece about George Galloway on Good Morning TV and Richard Madley started going after George about saying that um, uh, Saddam Hussein was indefatigable or whatever. Uh, apparently, I apparently said it about the, the Iraqi people. Now, that's interesting because that that kind of marks sort of the beginning of my journey, because in 2001, right, when September 11th went off, I was in the middle of a high court case and I was in my office in Docklands. My wife was shopping at Canary Wharf, my wife at the time. Uh, and, and that all, you know, 9-11 uh, happened. And I watched it, uh, you know, like the world and his brother at the time. Roll forward from that about a year and there were huge protests in London about the Iraqi you know, weapons of mass destruction, war on Iraq, the, the whole dodgy dossier stuff and all the rest of it. That totally passed me by at the time. Um, my only reaction, although the, the, apparently there's some demonstrations in London, was, like, well, I'll go for lunch locally then instead. You know, it just, I, you know, my consumption of news media in those days was the BBC. I read the Times and I'd read the Evening Standard now and again. I read books, but I hung out with my posh mates and, you know, had my fancy lifestyle um you know as I, I, I a very wealthy guy in london a, you know just high court case which obviously was occupying a lot of my time um but i uh, you know whoosh, not a clue not a clue and i'm you know um so i i i was the what i would say a typical consumer of and and and, and believer in the mainstream news narrative Right. So it's interesting that the Workers' Party come along and George Galloway is being challenged about that at that time, which talk about people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Now, Bastani's um, analysis of that interview is, is very good. Right. But it's not I would say it's not at all supportive of George Galloway and the Workers' Party. It's not outside of the two cheeks paradigm, you know, that. I've always said and laughed at George Galloway saying about his two cheeks of the art, same ass. Another funny thing he, he said, he used to call Nick Nicola Sturgeon Thatcher in a kill, which, you know, he, he, he comes out with really, he's a really funny guy. He's a very engaging speaker, as everyone knows. Um, uh, but, right, so Bastani's going to do an interview with him. And the trailer ahead of that, I, I sort of put notify me. So when it comes up, I will watch it. I, I think it's pre-recorded. Well, actually, it may not be because the preview is is Ash Sarka talking about greenness. And, and um, what they do is they've been criticising George Galloway for not buying into the climate change narrative. Now, why is that important to independence 
and the local elections, right? Well, it's hugely important because people aren't buying that rubbish anymore. It's propaganda. So in my blog today, I've, I've put in that video about the lunch report, you know, about how Hasbara Israeli propaganda about dealing with basically genocide in the West Bank um, and Gaza, right? How to deal with that? Then that thing I sent you about community, uh, the rules of the game, community uh, communicating climate change, the DTI document, right? And the other thing I've got in there is a another video called communicating uh, climate change, the Dr. Spock and um, uh, Captain Kirk of climate change communication, which is uh, in Australia. There's an Australian climate change journalist guy. Now, they're pushing that narrative, Navara. They're into that. So this Bastani thing, talking about George Galloway's, and they've got some woman on there, and she's absolutely hammering him. Oh, he doesn't believe in climate change. He's terrible. He's a denier. All that stuff. Now, I've tied that into a blog I did in 2019 about Mark Blythe. Now, Mark Blythe, is the you know he's, he's an interesting economist he's a tenured professor in some university in america big mates with yanis varafukis and all this well, of course they all push this climate change green new deal agenda too you know um you know even people i like do that so Anne Pettifor, for instance who you know uh, well, Anne Pettifor's in a completely different league to rawforth you know the eighth way of thinking that that one um but the the two cheeks of the same ass the bullshit the fact that representative politics within the red team blue team paradigm isn't working and people are pissed off with it on what people call the left that's articulated by george galloway on what people call the right it's articulated by andrew bridgen now Interesting. Andrew Bridgen obviously is doing a lot about vaccines harms. Well, Galloway was pushing the jabs. OK, during Covid, he, he, he was one that came out sort of saying people who aren't getting jabbed are, are selfish. Now, people made mistakes. Um, who, who George Galloway is and his connections actually to uh, that are tangential to the security services, right? We've had this conversation about David Graeber in the past. I mean, I have no doubt that he is an asset of, you know, some little nook or cranny of MI6. I mean, not a shadow of doubt, right? Um, but you see, my own take on security services is, you know, if they didn't exist, you'd want to invent them, but you would want to have some oversight of them. And the narcissism of recent heads of the security services is part of the, what's the problem with the whole of the establishment? It's the narcissism, it's the, gr the grift and all this sort of thing. Now, um, so Galloway, I I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. The other one is, um, oh, what's he called? Um, Oh, the one that uh, the reformed Islamicist radical Nawaz. Majid Nawaz. Yeah, Majid Nawaz. I, I, I really like him. Really interesting guy. Um, and, and his stuff is very radical. But I'd like to see him getting together with George Galloway, but also getting together with, 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 um, with, with, with Andrew Bridgen. And it's like this, OK? I, I was thinking about this this morning before I did this blog. I didn't put this bit in. But I was also, you know, according to the laws of physics, a bumblebee should not be able to fly, right? Now, here's an interesting thought experiment. Could a one-winged bumblebee fly? Okay, so they can't fly according to theory, but they do fly. If a left-winged bumblebee tried to fly, would it be able to fly? Would it fly around in circles? Would a right winged bumblebee be able to fly? Right. And so what I'm basically saying is independent, the independent wing of democratic politics. Right. So it doesn't fly in circles. It needs a right wing and a left wing, whatever those terms mean. But, you know, to def defy the laws of a priori materialist political economy, 
which is an elitist construct, uh, an oligarchical construct. It, it, it's one which um, oppresses the vast majority of people, including the oppressors themselves, if, if you read Paolo Freire, as I, I have. Um, this is the point. Um, are we at that point where um, we're over uh, three and a half percent of people are prepared to rise up in peaceful civil disobedience. Now, with 8.6 percent of all of those seats going to independent consultants, I'm saying yes. So Erica Chernowitz's work, which is stuff I've written about in the past, she's the one they did, you know, 30 uh, percent of violent revolutions maybe succeed, but lead to tyranny. 56% of peaceful revolutions succeed, but lead to democracy and, and, and you know, also all manner of, of goodness. Now, um, people like, say, James Dellingpole or Russell Brand and their newfound Christianity or whatever, you know, it's a personal matter for them. Um, what, I, I, they're both narcissists, right? That's, it's, bloody obvious they're, they're, they're a pair of narcissists and, and like if, if you want to be baptized or if you want to get on your knees before god you do it in private it's between you and god right you, you don't get yourself dunked in the thames um or you, i think you know, um, or, or get... i think i think aaron bastani is um uh quite loudly catholic now Well, he's a, he is a Catholic, is he? Because because he's got Iranian. Well, I background. think he said that his yes. mum's a Catholic, but he's been. He did an episode with Ash talking about God, in which he said that he kind of didn't really have time for it before, but he does now. So he's he's um. I don't know. He's not ordained. He's not a priest. Yeah. Well, I mean, people's uh, religious faith is their own business, and I, I you know, you, you know, my my take on it is it's it's between you and God you know, between one and the one, as it were. And I think, I, I mean, I had a long chat with Mike about this yesterday. He, he's a lapsed, Catholic, a lapsed Roman Catholic, um, you know, who, who basically, I don't know if he's lost his faith completely, but we, over the years, he and I have had loads and loads of discussions about all sorts of uh, stuff to do with that. And we have, you know, we, we were talking for two hours yesterday and about half of it was about all of that stuff. Right. Um, and so I, I've got like got the Robert Graves interview uh, in my blog today, which he did with Malcolm Muggeridge in 1965, when he says, I know my Bible, but I'm not a follower of the ecclesiastics, you know, which is basically formal religion, dogma and all of that stuff. Uh, and, and the hierarchical stuff where people are, are arguing who's the closest to jo God or the route to you know, the, yeah, get, get the, the route to God there. is through everybody's own heart and everyone's own conscious. So that's my view. Yes, guess he's religious now. Um, I think there was a podcast that might have been shot in February and then they released it about a, two or three weeks ago, maybe three or four weeks ago. Uh, and it was Peter Thiel. And he's being asked some questions. And. Yeah, he's. It's very much like I'm a philosopher, but it's all about Christianity. Oh, yes. He's properly going on about Christianity. And um, yeah, I was on TikTok today. And someone who I think is a wannabe real estate person was talking about why it's such a good thing to spend £8,000 a year um, on his gym. <laughs> he said the reason why is because it's good for networking <laughs> and then he said <laughs> then he said oh yeah I, you know i just go in there i just introduce myself to everyone you know these other guys trading he goes you know i've met some really rich people there you know and then uh, and then he said you know i met some some rich people and then he says i've met a couple of billionaires as well and then he said um yeah i was in the sauna the other day uh talking to peter Thiel." right well i just <laughs> Roger, look, I know you're all equal opportunities and everything like that, but I mean, I didn't think it was a good idea for this person to tell everyone that he spent 8K on meeting Peter Thiel in a sauna. Well, I, I, P, 
people have some very strange ideas. I, I uh, and and you know, I, I the guy, you know, as you present it, the guy sounds like a fucking idiot, doesn't he? But I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it was just it was just quite funny. To also, just thinking, how's Peter Thiel a Christian when he's gay and he runs Palantir? Well, yeah, I mean, that's cool if he thinks he is. Well, it, it, in a, in a, it's just none of our business, really. And and you know, it, he'll find yeah, out. However, 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 one is judged. And if I think ultimately, we all judge why ourselves. Am I being told? Pardon? If it's not by business, why is he telling me? I've no idea. It's just narcissism is that like people it, it, it's it, it's it's part of what i think is wrong with the world you know it's like oversharing you know I, but yeah so you you were talking about you're talking about um navara galloway and then delling pole and brand saying that they're christians in public yeah i mean it, it, it's the narcissism aspect of it I, I'm, I'm not saying that makes them uh insincere i'm sure they are I, I, you know i'm absolutely sure of it um but it's a shame that they think anyone else should be remotely interested um or that it's anyone else's business you know that they, they you know um i, I it's it, yeah i mean I, I, and so in in terms of right in terms of navara um, the point about that you, you brought up about Aaron Bastani now being Catholic or whatever. Oh, great. Absolutely no problem with that at all. Um, what I do have a problem with with Navarra Media is that they will at attack, attack George Galloway because this is the other thing is that Richard Madley was sort of saying, oh, you converted to Islam. And he actually said, well, actually, no, I'm a Roman Catholic in good standing. <laughs> you know, so um, Muslims, right, they, they call Christians and Jews people of the book. Yeah. Right. And all people of the book, you know, it's the, the same God. Um, yeah. So, you know, um, I, I don't know much about Hinduism. I, I mean, I, 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 there are several types of gods, but I don't know if there's a boss god or anything like that. But, you know, in terms of um, the, the basis of the philosophy, I'm like, things like the caste system, that, that's, is that out of Hinduism? Because that's hierarchical, think, and a hierarchical organised religion, I think, is kind think of against what I believe. I think that's a bit like the water we were talking about the other day. Where, you know, it's what you swim in. Mm -hmm. And I think, personally, I was never taught about it. Mm -hmm. I only learned about it because when my, like, as in I heard the term, but in my family, I never really heard about it until, I didn't notice it until when my dad passed away, his um, funeral was seven days after he passed away. And... Uh, an aunt passed away who my dad's brother had married and her funeral was a different number of days mm -hmm. and I was told that was because she ate meat and we don't right and so that's all part of the pyramidical system uh -huh. how you know if you're at the top then you don't do this and you do do that so I think effectively my dad did not believe in any of this and personally it's a weird one any anything conservative if it's been there for a long time you can't pretend it hasn't been there but that doesn't mean that you have to buy it yeah yeah it also doesn't mean that you shouldn't apply chesterton's gate <laughs> sorry chesterton's gate is that chesterton's fence is that what you yes. can and can't talk about no no it, it, oh no sorry no, that's throwing the baby out of the bath if you want to get rid of it if you're going to change then, something put a gate on it first because you can always restore the fence afterwards is, is that sort of like if you can't if yeah if you want to get rid of something then you need to come up with a good reason as to why it's there because yeah, if change for change sake or just to be progressive is not necessarily a very wise 
way to proceed. You know, that that is the way of lemmings, as it were. Yeah. If you can't explain why it's there, then maybe you don't know why you want to get rid of it. Yeah. So I anyway, back to independence and, um, you know, that's enough about yeah. that. What about me and my blog? <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I was saying to my sister this morning, I, I, I just get a strong sense, much stronger than I've had before, that there is this upwelling of incredulity. Right? I don't put it any stronger than that. But as I say, starting out not paying attention. So that's 9-11 and the protests about the invasion of Iraq post 9-11. So that's Tony Blair and George W. Bush's war. It's quite interesting to see that Colonel Warren um, Wilkerson, Lawrence Wilkerson, is um, in the loop of ex-military types that are talking up against, uh, the, you know, the new the new establishment tyranny. Um, and he, he was the aide to Colin Powell. He was his aide de camp. Uh, who, who wrote all the papers for the, the anthrax and the, you know, three minutes and all, all of that bullshit in the dodgy dossier. Um, so interesting guy, Wilkerson. But he also reminds me of the, of the other one before him was um, Chalmers. Um, what was he called? Um, Chalmers Edwards or something. Anyway, he, he's ex, ex CIA military intelligence. Um, and, and he, he, he he was very you know very good and and present on the web in the, in the noughties quite a lot. I think he passed away now. Obviously Wilkinson's still with us. But it, it you see the sum total of people paying attention and linking back into those that have gone before that that were paying attention and have passed on the baton as it were. Right, um, my. My blogging on Substack has, has been a condense, uh, a reduction of, a redux of basically the blog I started in 2011. Now, I started that blog uh, 10 years after I hadn't been paying attention. It's now, you know, it's now 2024, Ranjan, as we know, you know, I, so um, I, I retired when I was 39 or 38, 39, whatever it was. I'm 60 in September, um, and also I'm no longer in retirement. But it's 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 a long period of time of paying attention, um, and feeling gaslit is not such a it, it, it's not such a familiar feeling anymore. The feeling of having been gaslit or being gaslit, you know, um, in 2004 or 2005 was much greater than it is now. Um, you know, during COVID, when, when the, you know, the things really went down, I mean, I, I linked to a blog that I did in 2019, um, it's a comment on on uh, Gollum, Gollum X1P, uh, on, on David's blog, uh, basically talking about Grub Street Journal and trying to beat the filters then and, and the crackdown that's coming up. Now, obviously, I had no idea that COVID was coming down the pipe, but that was based on the crackdown I saw put in place after all the Brexit stuff. Yeah, you, you and I have been chatting regularly since 2015. Yeah, in, in 2017, I think it was called the YouTube Bocalypse, and loads of people got taken out then. What was it? The Canary, they got really badly fucked, and lots of other genuinely independent. The Canary, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because no, agree, they were yeah. dependent on uh, Google for their adverts and stuff like that, and they were genuinely getting a lot of traffic. And then it just got throttled. Yeah, well, Canary, XRO, they, there are a whole bunch of things that, that, that um, uh, and people who still bubble away in the background. So I, I don't remember to read it all the time, but the Voltaire Network, for instance, you know, Thierry Mason's thing. I mean, it's always worth checking to see 
you know, he wrote a brilliant article last week about Emmanuel Macron and what, what he's up to at the moment and, and why he, uh, yeah, I mean, why he is how he is, you know, where that all comes from. Um, you know, I, yeah. So anyway, like I say, I, 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 so I went downstairs for a cup of coffee and a cigarette this morning about seven o'clock, and then I was kind of thinking, oh, you know, what, what, what was I thinking about? And what it was is that the Off Guardian did a piece at the beginning of the local elections, so their take on the local elections. And I, I was going to comment at the time, but I didn't. But but um, the anyway, I sent myself a note on my notes. Um, where are we? Notes. There it is. Notes. So and I just said, right, local elections, council of despair or council of independence, percentage of independence. And from that, I, I kind of, you know, I. It took me an hour and a half to knock out the blog today, and it's still like lots of links, and there's no no prose. It's got quite a few poems in there. Um, but I tell you what, I did um, this morning when I woke up. I, I actually read my poem, uh, "Usury Hell's Fuel, Man's Oppressor," um, and it's, uh, you know, I know I wrote it. I think it's a really good poem, which certainly talks to me. Um, but um, in fact, my trilogy of poems is as current, you know. Um, yeah, so there's a lot to get to encapsulate, and poems do that. So anyway, the, the beginning of the blog, I've got Pushkin's um, Exegis Mementi, you know, um, and, and why that came into my head is, is, is seeing George Galloway talking to Richard Madley, and I just remembered... Oh, that's Pushkin, that is never argue with a fool. It's the last line in, in Exegius Mementi. And uh, I don't know, we, 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 we talked back in 2019 about uh, one of our recorded chats when, when, when I actually said, I'd just like to read this poem. I, don't, I thought it quoted, so, and I think you were fascinated when I quoted uh, Pushkin's thing about um, translators being the false horses of the Enlightenment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which, which is a really important concept. So another one of the poems, uh, Sajita Bat, her, her a different history, but but um, she, she I, I hadn't read it before, but I found it today. She's got another one called Another Tongue. And this idea is the linguistic prison that we all live in, and a, 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 a linguistic prison imposed by culture, but which is also um, enforced through censoring free speech censoring people's speech what you can and can't say um and you know i i, I found the trailer to um the the trailer to the galloway interview coming up with bastani uh being ash tarker talking about climate change i find that offensive i found it offensive that they had a analyst come on that basically hated on Galloway because he's a denier um, and uh, what I got in my inbox today because I'm on their mailing list is the we don't have time organization which was the original organization between Greta Thunbury because uh, don't forget she's only been around since the beginning of 2019 um, and uh, she disassociated herself from that and I did some I did some editing on the article about her and them on Wikipedia at the time and I there's a there's a chunk of my blog about the editing I did on the Dr Vernon Coleman uh, Wikipedia article what I did with that is I actually proposed it for article of the week because it was so shit but there were all these people editing it and I was like saying well if if all your edits are so brilliant let's put it up for article of the week <laughs> 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 yeah but anyway <laughs> I mean you can't complain can you if someone said that to you uh, 
But anyway, he, he did a talk the other day. He's still going. And um, it's, you know, they want to kill you. And I, I think that's true. I, I do think that the uh, corrupted establishment, oligarch, parasite class do want to kill the plebs. That's what they're all about. You know, they don't care who knows it at this point. But, but hold on, the independents are fighting Roger. back. Hold on, Roger. Free thought. I thought. I thought you also thought that the parasite does not kill its host. Uh, well, the problem is, is this: they're so inbred and and and, and um, uh, so filled with hubris at this point that they're not the evil geniuses that invented the system. They 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 inherited it, and they don't know that. That's the problem. So, so you know, Rees so Mogg. Therefore, therefore, I am detecting a shift in sentiment from the parasite does not a parasite does not kill its host to an intelligent parasite does not kill its host. However, we are talking about a disconnected system of parasiticism in which the host will be killed. Yeah, the, the, it basically, it's a it's a parasite that's lost its marbles. I mean, it, it, it's utterly bankrupt it's bereft of any um any sound thought uh, you know it, it it lacks any sort of moral ethical co compass forget about you know religion or any sort of normative view about you know uh I mean, like Mike said to me the other day, he said, well, what about do no harm, Rog? And I said, well, if that's the only one we've got, I'll take it because do no harm. You know, what could possibly go wrong? Do you know, I mean, it, it's uh, <clears throat> if everyone's living by that, there wouldn't be a problem, would there? But almost by definition, the system we have is going to do lots of harm. And what's really difficult for me to cope with is seeing apparently well intentioned people falling for this idea that the climate movement, whether they've disavowed Extension Re Rebellion or think Greta Thunberg is, is some sort of stooge or whatever, um, they are effectively operating under a deluded, um, a, a deluded notion about what hydrocarbons are, they call them fossil fuels. And, and Doomberg did a very good article, which I linked to in my blog yesterday, not today's, but yesterday's, um, talking about, well, if CO2 is the problem, the policy that's in place is actually making the CO2 problem worse. CO2 isn't a problem, it just, it just isn't. It, it's an absolute nothing burger co2 right it's an absolute nothing there's plenty of links to, to climate change stuff in the in the in, in the blog i did today um but it's, what about what about it's all of these beard, it's a beard for central bank digital currencies and the carbon currency end game that's what it is it's about baking um baking feudalist rationing into the cake uh, and, 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 you know, basically it's about exposing the, the weak in a very uh, platonic sense. So in the Republic, um, Plato talks about the exposure of, the, of, 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 of children. And what he's talking about is, is actually just letting children die if they're not the right sort of children or the ones, you know, it's, it's, you know, Plato's Republic is it is an oligarchical, dystopic um, guidebook for well, in at that, that time, Greek fascism. You know, but have you have you seen how we're doing? Have you seen how we're doing assisted dying now, euthanasia? Oh, good God! I, 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 who was talking? About that? Well, that's what um, that that is what. Um, Dr. Vernon Col Coleman's latest talk is about, which is linked to in my blog today. So, yes, yeah, so I've heard what he said about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, they, you could just feel them slowly cranking up. So, right now, they're saying that, um, Jimmy Savile's mate, Esther Ranson, she's there going, I've got lung cancer. 
I believe in assisted dying. This is my final raw. And but what she says is, I feel I should be allowed to do assisted dying uh, at a time of my choosing. Well, I mean, if she's got, if, if that's what she believes, just top herself. The rest of us don't need to hear about it. I mean, that's her, that's her choice. You know. Now, I, Roger, I, I want you to know that that was fairly crude, but I think I agree with you. Well, I mean, you know, I don't fucking care. I couldn't give a shit about her, <laughs> you know, but if she wants to top herself. We'll have at it. You know, I, I'm not telling her not to. But I do object to her advocating it while I'm doing it and everyone else should follow my example. Well, fuck off, you miserable bitch. I'm not interested. But if that's what works for you. Fucking fine. Have at it. You know, float your boat all day long in your own fucking bullshit. But don't impose it on my my mum or my aunt or my elderly relatives or me in my old age. Fuck off. That's. Yeah, I think because the implication is what they said is um, I listened to the to the to the wording on the BBC the other day. This is, you know, the 10 seconds when they mentioned it in the news and they said, yeah, it's I think they said it's gone through in Scotland. And, and in Canada England. and, you know, Switzerland. Yeah, and then they and made Belgium. it sound like the other thing that's really unclear about the news here is partially. You listen and you say, oh, it's already here, but there's something else that's coming in. So on the one hand, they say, oh, we're talking about it because it's coming in. Then they say, well, it's kind of already here. I think that's a technique that's often used yeah. to make it sound yeah. as though there's no jump from yeah. its. We not should yet. ask Medazalem Matt, Matt Hancock and the Medazalem. And, you know, I, th th these people uh, are yeah, murdering, murdering, murderous, fascist, Nazi assholes. You know, that's what they are. You know, I mean, I, I just and fuck them. That's what I say. Just uh, absolutely. Let's let's call them what they are. They're fascist assholes. Mm. So what about the implication of the independent vote then? Uh, well, I think it's brilliant. I, 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 I think that um, we should get behind it. I, I think Off Guardian is a council of despair. I mean, like my my blog today kind of bubbled up from when I read there uh, for, for a number of months now. I, I feel the same way about the slog at the moment as well. It, 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 it's uh, it's oh, woe is me. I did one the other day about woe is me, you know. Um, and uh, the <laughs> it, it, it is ridiculous. And it's complaining for complaining's sake. I mean, if you've got a complaint, then act on it. Do something about it. And something people can do constructively is they can go on Wikiballot and start a local action group to get hold of an MP that will represent their constituency. Do what Andrew Bridging says. You know, you can either have an MP that represents the party in Parliament or an MP who represents the constituency in Parliament. You can't have both. And so that means don't vote for Labour, any of the mainstream parties, just don't do it, you know, unless you can get some sort of assurance and vet whoever's standing uh, and, and, and look them in the eye and believe them. But, if, you know, as soon as they disappear into Westminster, they end up, you know, doing all the sort of stuff that gets them into trouble with the security services, you know, um, the, the whip's office get their their you know, their, their, their uh, Dickinson dossiers into them, as it were. Um, you know, you can't be sending those people off to Westminster because they get corrupted. So, you know, they need to be recalled. They, they need to be flushed out and flushed down the toilet is where they need to go. So, yeah, I mean, I so I'm very encouraged by, by, by that trend, and I think it's being understated and ignored rather pointedly in the press. It's not coming out in the analysis, and that's because they don't want to encourage it because it's not something they're going to want to see continue. But it's something that you know uh, we, we we should all take considerable uh, sucker from, and you know, and 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 do more more of that, please, more of that. And that's that's all I'm saying. Let's have more of this. Do you remember? Um, do you remember the name Ian Greer? I do. He was the lobbyist in the Cash for Questions scandal. Yeah. 
Yeah, because when the speaker's father died the other day, there was a good obituary of him in the Telegraph. Mm -hmm. I don't actually often go on the Telegraph, but I wanted to find the obituary. I looked at the one in the Guardian, looked at the one in the Telegraph. One in the Telegraph was much better. And one of the things they mentioned was that there was a time before, because he went to the Lords in 97, roughly when his son came in mm -hmm. um, to the Commons. But they said that in the time preceding that, when you had the arms for Iraq um, inquiry or whatever it was, um, he was on one of the committees. That's the Iraqi super gun, was it? Or... Yeah, that type of thing. Yeah. He was on one of the committees. This is, what's his name? Um, was it, is it Lindsay Howell? Is that the name of the guy? The speaker? Anyway. Yeah. The, yeah. the speaker's father was on one of those committees and even though there was nothing to prove that it had undermined his or biased his point of view, he had to leave the committee because he had received money from Ian Greer at his constituency. Oh, right. Okay. And of course, that's what did for Jonathan Aitken as well, wasn't it? Talking about someone else who found God, because Jonathan Aitken, you know, he, he said he'd been slandered and he was going to use his shield and sword of justice. And yeah, all the, the Damascene, the sword of Damascene. his own petard. <laughs> No, completely. Well, I think what was interesting in terms of the link that you just made there was with Ian Greer, I think it turned out that in the mid 90s they checked and he had given money, his 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 lobbying group had given money to almost every I MPL. Say, I, I, I don't think that he was unacquainted with Dolphin Square, if you know what that means. Well, exactly. I think I don't know how many people talk about that, mm. but. Ian Greer, or, or the Whips seemed to be, and and Dickerson's dossier and all of that. Yeah, I think or, the or, idea or that was place that in, doing in, military in South London, the, the 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 guest house, you know. Yeah, I'm military not talking about, London, but also uh, the I'm not talking about the luncheon voucher one either. I'm not talking about Cynthia Payne. I'm talking about the other one. Sorry, we have we're talking about the other one, not Cynthia Payne in Streatham. But, but the one down in uh, uh, Elm House, you know, Elm. So I, all of this, you know, that underbelly of, 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 uh, of, of you know, the, the really sordid part of Westminster politics, how, how long that's been covered up for and is still covered up is, is uh, you know, that's why you need to get ind independence in there. Um, yeah. But but you're, still hey, a big believer in, you're still a big believer in the system, though, aren't you, Roger? Well, I'm a big believer in the Constitution, yeah, because, it, I mean, it, it developed over several hundred years. You know, when was Magna Carta, Magna Charta, whatever? So, 1215? Yeah, so 800-odd years of, of struggle, you know, if, if, if it's applied... You know, it works. And, and actually, this is Cheston's gate, or Cheston's fence, you know. Um, it is absolutely childish and ridiculous to throw everything out and start again because some Herbert says, well, I know a better way. I've invented a better way. Well, actually, you know, I my grandfathers were involved in politics in the 20s and 30s you know at the coal face literally um and uh you know i come from a part of wales where the chartists were very active so dr price is a statue of him up in clan i mean like he's known as this sort of mad druidic uh figure but he was a you know involved with the chartists so the rebellion in newport stuff like that things to do with widening the franchise it's it's a long process and the so, so the the constitution and how, how we do it in this country has served us pretty well it didn't save us from becoming an imperial power and all the rest of it i mean you've got to work at it and you've got to keep on top of it but you do need to know
there are a few rotten apples in the barrel, right? But the barrel is still sound. And, you know, the, the metaphors could go on and on. But essentially what I'm saying, OK, is there are two types of system. There's a republic or a constitutional monarchy. We've got a constitutional monarchy. It has been degraded and corrupted. We need to get back to the basically get back to the the sound wood, as it were. The Americans, they've got a republic. Right. And their constitution works when they apply it. But theirs is also corrupted. Right. And so they don't need to throw the bar, the baby out with the bathwater either. But they're two different systems. Right. And of course, what you've got in the EU, which is basically a fascist dictatorship model of, of you know, fusing together all the worst of feudalism and fascism. And, you know, they, it, it's as if someone's picked all the worst bits for the people and sort of said, oh, that's I know that's a good idea. We'll do that. And then someone points out, well, nobody would vote for that. And they said, well, that doesn't matter. We won't let them or we'll let them pretend they're voting. That's that's how absurd the the stall when you set it out properly and see what it is that this generation of schoolmen, professional politicians, professional corporate managers and technocrats, okay, they're ignorant experts. So I, I, um, on, on my uh, Conquest of Doe blog, there, there's a quote from... Um, Oh, what's he called? Uh, Gassetta. He's a Spanish writer. And he's Ortega y Gasset. Yes. And, and there's a quote of his about um, learned ignoramuses. Right. And it's, you know, it just sums it up. You know, they, 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 they've got no context for humanity because they're just so up their own arses with their own cork sniffing. And of course, they all demure to each other, you know. Um, it, it's well, it's like George Carlin says, a great big club, and you fucking ain't in it, you know. I mean, uh, you know, whether we choose to be or not, isn't that you know, it, it, I think it chooses from the most corruptible people, they're the people who advance. It's not a meritocracy, it's a it is a cacos, cacatos, really. You know, it's the you know, ruled by the shittiest, it really is. Um. So um, the White Stripes have got a good song called Cacistocracy, which which is very good. Um, I think it came out in the nineties. But yeah, it's it's cacistocracy that that we're labouring under. But you know, the, I am encouraged by the rise of the independent vote. Yeah, I found an Ortega y Gasset quote here. Yeah. Revolution is not the uprising against a pre-existing order, but the setting up of a new order contradictory to the traditional one. That is what he calls revolution. And usually comes fully fitted out with iconoclasm, which is another name for throwing the baby out of the bath water. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's. Yeah, I. It, there are all sorts of stuff to do with, um, you know, the Greek concept of arete that, that, that are highly, highly cogent to um, those who are fitted and fit, fitted out and fit for um, great offices or offices of, 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 of responsibility. Um, and the current selection or the, the current selection process, it's not an election process, it's an election process, uh, is at odds with all of those ancient um, ideals of, 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 of virtue. You know, virtue in the in the Greek philosophical sense. So there you go. That's my take on it. But good for the independence and all the rest of it. And I've, I've quite enjoyed it. I, I, I am going to watch Bastani, in, you know, with his interview with George Galloway. I, I, it would be nice if George Galloway or Bastani, Bastani should interview Andrew Bridgen, because I really like Andrew Bridgen. He would never do that. Well, 
he probably wouldn't. But I don't, you know, I don't think I don't think he would. That, that, um, that, that, that that's why I, I agree. Well, you did your bit where you you felt that they were perhaps more independent than some other things like politics, Joe, for instance. But there, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some Soros money in the back there somewhere. To be honest, with all this uh, climate change, yeah, I nonsense. can't remember who it was. Somebody put somebody put something out this week saying, "Are Navarra, um, <coughs> you know, spooks basically?" Um, because of the way in which they always go against certain people who are saying certain things. Yeah, I, look, I, I don't know, and I don't care if they are. It doesn't bother me. I, I, I don't have an in-principle objection to spooks at all. I'm not that naive. Um, what I have an in-principle objection to is spooks that aren't actually within a political overview. And our political class is not fit a fitted out or able because they're so corrupted to keep an eye on the spooks and vice versa you know both elements of our establishment need to be reoccupied by um by people who have the interests of the of the state at heart rather than the interests of the corporate state which are two very different things well you know, roger good 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 chatting um yeah maybe we'll uh catch up next week yeah for sure I, 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 i'm there's the off-site construction show at xl next week between the 7th and the 9th and i'm I, i'm hoping to be up on one day for that i so i probably will be there on the 7th which is the 7th the wednesday what is it today it's the 5th 6th 7th is wednesday yeah i'll either be there on the wednesday or the thursday I think the seventh is actually Tuesday. For the, for the hold, on. hold on, today's the fifth. Today's Sunday. Tomorrow's Monday, fifth. and it's bank holiday. Today's the fifth. So Tuesday's the seventh. Yes. So. All oh, right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's, it's Tuesday. Right. Yeah. So maybe maybe I'll see you on Tuesday. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I don't know if you fancy coming along with me, but but um, I'll be free. Yeah, and it's it's free to get in, so you know, I mean, you have to register, but I could register a plus one. Um, but regardless, I mean, I, I'll I'll probably spend a few hours wandering around there, taking the piss out of people. <laughs> but you know, it'd be nice to go and have a couple of beers and some lunch. And uh, we'll have lunch at Canary Wharf. I, you know, um, that would be nice. Go go. I, I don't know. You've not met my friend Julia, have you? Julia Davy, no, Julia Davy, no. Angel Group. Well, well, Julia's fantastic, and I've I've been meaning to meet up with her too. So if she's around, maybe we'll have lunch with Julia. Brilliant. All right, yeah. well, let's chat on Tuesday. All right, lovely job. All right, mate. See you in a bit. Bye. You take care. Oh, I spoke to Lloyd, by the way. I oh, really? Him, How is I he? I rang him last Sunday and I chat with him. Yeah, they, they, yeah, he's fine. But uh, I. I, I, I subscribed to the spectator again so I could comment and I did put some comments so I just you know it just creased me up but uh, he's you know I, I really like Lloyd he's great <laughs> and we've had a few good nights out with him haven't we have a few good lunches he's, he's a, he's a yeah good... I mean he seems like quite an innocent person to be honest but yeah yeah I mean he's just he's he's just a he's a sound sound as a pound he's a good good chap <laughs> yeah all Very right sad. well i mean of course i never went to see his dominic cummings play so be good no me that. neither i i think he's written a sequel since then or whatever because i would like to see it but anyway i, I either way we, we yeah i'll see you in the week okay see you in a bit bye all right mate take care cheers ranger bye